Hello and welcome to Paper Tuesdays, episode 29 with Mark Halpin and Michael Dwyer. This is the home of general stuff and that's the way it's going, isn't it? That is the way it's going, Rob. Or Mark, you're Mark. Mark, we're having <laughs> awful trouble these past few weeks with internet difficulties. But anyway, I suppose that's what we do for our Paper Tuesdays and for Patreon subscribers. We have to, of course, we're, met, we're, by, we're contracted to mention Alex Murphy and Gavin Stamp. Would mm-hmm. you mention them if... Like we weren't contracted to mention them. No, no, no. I didn't think so. Especially <laughs> Gavin Stamp. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then also our other producers. Um, we have Bree Brown, John O'Hallan, and Avian Halpin, um, Connor Kinsella, uh, Tommy O'Neill, Shane and, Michael Halpin, and Shane and Michael Halpin. And I think we're missing one, but they will forgive us. Poems. Ah, never mind. Anyway, we start Joy Quig- uh, Joy Quigley's here with us. Hey! hey. hey. Eventually we got Joy here after 50 minutes of trying to get the computer to work. Are we so after lucky 50 though? minutes, after two different types of communications, <laughs> at one stage I was just going to ring you to be totally honest with you. <laughs> but I'm so glad that we have someone like you on Joy because, you know, if it was someone that was a bit precious or like worried about their time, like you've waited 50 minutes. What did you do for the last 50 minutes like? Well, I'm on my third cup of tea. I was going to yeah. crack open a can, but I thought that probably wouldn't be the wisest idea. You'd be so surprised. I just had tea. <laughs> and I don't know what it says about my Friday nights that I can wait for the 50 minutes for you, Slim. Or that you're talking to us at all. <laughs> or that I'm actually, yeah. <laughs> Joy, I think I need to get a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could take up a hobby of reading books. And, uh, you know, if we were to start reading books, we'd recommend I Cross the Line by Liam Dunn. We do this thing where we pick a random paragraph and we talk about it and this week Joy it's my turn and as you can tell I'm so excited because there's just (laughs) you know there's such a a selection right there it didn't take the people of Wexford long to realise the significance of what had happened we were in an All-Ireland semi-final against Tipperary I just gave myself a day or two to celebrate and unwind and it was back to the grindstone now there we go. That was beautifully read, Michael. I, well I, done. I'd love to know what celebrate and unwind is <laughs> in Lee Dunn's life. I mean, look at him there. Look at that man celebrating and unwinding. Isn't he lovely? Isn't he? Isn't he just <laughs> breaking hurdles across trees for two days? <laughs> Joy, Mark is going to give you a question now, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I'll kick things off. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's Joy. questions. Oh, so you haven't prepared me for questions. Oh, it's, it's, like, a, it's like an Irish oral. Yeah, yeah. Like. It's intense. <laughs> we'll get the heavy stuff out of the way first. Right, Joy, so on this day in 1954, the first Burger King was opened in America. What is your favourite fast food chain and what would you get to eat out of it? Domino's, without a shadow of a doubt, Domino's. Hey, I always get the midweek meal, which I call the Joy <laughs> Special. Medium pizza, two sides, two cans of Coke, so it looks like you're sharing, but they're actually <laughs> both for you. Top tip, lads. That's without a doubt, joy. without a doubt, a Domino's. Yeah, but isn't that great that you're a personal trainer and that you still let yourself have those moments, you know, because otherwise a lot of people would just say, no, I just eat grass all day, uh, seven days a week, you know, so, well, you know, you live. Monday to Saturday, I just eat ice, you know, and then it's the Sundays I have my Domino's, you know. All oh, right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I know John knows without a shadow of doubt. It's funny actually. When I was in first year of college, I used to live in an apartment like literally across from Domino's, and we used to ring them all the time. And at one stage, they were like, "Hello, Miss Quigley." I was like, "Okay, this is gone." <laughs> <laughs> so you have an addiction. Uh, my what favorite, about yours? What's your favorite? Uh, I don't know McDonald's maybe, but I don't. I don't partake in the McDonald's that often now. Um, if I'm thinking fast food as in you know big multinational uh, conglomerate, conglomerate as we call them yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> well, any, what's yours? any form of uh, well like if we're going conglomerates I would um, probably be KFC right I'd say oh. um, but if we're going just other takeaways I would recommend barbecue cowboys or cowboy barbecue ah, in Hollyford good man which Mark. is deadly Joy have you been out there I don't think ah, so. That's class. It, unbelievable. Have you You've seen it? Yeah, yeah. I actually we had my <laughs> for my granny's 80th we, this year we all had um 
No, no, we actually, we didn't, it was grand. It was my granddad's birthday, okay, that uh, we had a chips takeaway from uh, Barbecue Cowboys, the whole lot of us, eight or ten of us in COVID. Uh, it's great, it's a real proper burger joy, you know, it's on, it's fresh from the barbecue, the smoke is rising from the place. Nice. And on that day back in August, like, there was a wind blowing through the place in Hollyford. <laughs> like, I don't know how they were making money, but I hope they do on foot of this Paper Tuesday's recommendation of the week. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Hashtag sponsored. <laughs> yeah. I fucking wish. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Joy, the Emperor's New Groove or a Bug's Life? I don't know what the Emperor's New Groove is. Fuck, Michael, can we find someone else, please? <laughs> <laughs> the What's Emperor's that? New Groove is a classic tale of not taking things for granted and. Your man is a llama, but then he turns back into a person after being a llama. It's a great, it's a harrowing tale, though. You really should watch oh, it. Oh, a- I've just Googled it. Cusco. The Emperor. Oh. And what was my options? Uh, that or <laughs> A Bug's Life. You've surely seen Bug's Life. You have. It's the blue ant. The blue ant. What's his name? Yeah. And there's, big- the, there's the caterpillar who's like, oh, I am a big fat caterpillar. <laughs> And there's the stick insect. Um, yeah, the stick insect. Yeah. I'm really yeah. sorry to tell these lads, but I've probably seen about four films in my life. Wow! I don't watch right. telly. Okay. What were the four then? Give us one. What's your yeah? What's your Toy favorite Story? Film? Ah, okay. Story, yeah, yeah, deadly. Okay. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, mm. Shrek. Yeah. Um. Oh, what's that one? Do you know? Do you know when they're in jail and he escapes out through the tunnel? Oh, um, fucking. Uh, prison. Your man. Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good And yeah. um, okay, let's go with three because the yeah, first one obviously wasn't yeah, 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 no. We'll, I'd go with Bugs Life because Bugs I haven't seen the other one, Mark. We'll just have you to watch it. You haven't seen no, him. No, no. Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you don't want to go for his new groove, can you please like El Dorado? Let us know. I love that. Oh, is that coming up? Oh, leave uh, that. No, it's not. Up. It's not coming up actually. But, but I was thinking about it the other day as well. Oh, Elder Adol's movie. class. Have you seen? Yeah. You haven't seen that, Joy? Then no. Sorry. <laughs> it's oh, it's so good. They go and they find the city and they yeah. play that game with the armadillo through the little hole. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, oh, and you must have had a terrible childhood. I didn't one. see any of these. Yeah, no. Uh, you have to go back. Mark isn't disputing that. You have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, if you're listening, I'm messing. <laughs> Number three, you surely have, know what two of these are. Summer or winter? <laughs> what are that? No. <laughs> um, summer or wi- winter? Really? Ooh. Why? Yeah, winter. I love the big jumpers and the big jackets and the scarves. And Gosh, you'd fit in well here in this shed, Joy. Yeah, yeah it's winter. Old. And then as well as that, obviously I'm ginger and I burn in the summer. Like I can't... <laughs> You know, go out without getting third degree burns on my chest and my nose. So, so. for practical and emotional reasons. Correct. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Mark? You're a summer. I'm winter. a summer man. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is actually my first winter in two years. Oh yeah. Because I sort of worked it out the way I went to Australia. I done all summers. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. No. <laughs> but isn't it great that we're almost through it? Like we're in it's, the yeah. It's you know be a stretch in the evenings again. Yeah. So back to it. <laughs> Can't wait. What about your summer man, Michael? Surely I think so. Yeah, but pair do you know, of shorts. yeah, I, I think I'd be, I wouldn't be the best an- winter man now. I don't like how the dark evenings now. I don't think any of us do. We've struggled with this dark evening thing over the last few weeks, have we? We do. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, but isn't that show how the power of sunlight and yeah, <laughs> sunlight is class. Do you take vitamin D supplements? No, not do you? You should because that's oh. what they're saying uh, for the cold. Fauci, I was on the Fauci last week. Yeah, and he was saying that your vitamin D is important <laughs> to keep the COVID away. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> I was a bit late to the party and I oh, right. had to fight COVID oh, yeah. on my own without <laughs> vitamin D as a weapon. <laughs> but Joy, you were going for a walk. Uh, was it this morning? So you go for walks yes. in the morning. Tell us about I that. go for walks every morning. Yeah, it's the first thing I do when I wake up before I get tea, coffee, breakfast. The first thing I do is go for a walk. Jesus. And why why is that? Or like normally for Um I think it's a great way to start the day. I always start my day with a bit of movement. So whether it be a bit of morning yoga or a bit of a walk to get fresh air and clear your head for the day, I think it's really important. I think especially in today's climate, you know, with being in 
being restricted, being in isolation, being told you can't leave, your head is all over the place. And just taking, whether it be like 10 minutes or 20 minutes to yourself to just kind of check in and clear your head for the day. Mm. I just think it's really important. So I sound like a hippie now, but uh, that's what I do. <laughs> Embrace it. That's great. Yeah. 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 That's solid. Yeah. Now, I'd have to have a coffee. Like, I'd have to say, I'd have to reason with myself. That'd be my bar turn now. Like, right, if you get up and go for a walk, you can have a coffee first. So, like, right, wake mm. up and then you have a coffee and then you go for a walk. And it's like, okay, I'll do it. Mm. See, because I'm, like, Michael will tell you, it's, I'm like, you have to poke me with a stick to get me to do things sometimes. So, I find that, <laughs> I have that philosophy myself too, so. <laughs> well, Mark, you should try it. One morning next week, when you wake up, just go for even 10 minutes around the block in the fresh air and just see how good you feel then when you drink your coffee after. I'm sure I fucking have to do it now, don't I? Yeah. I'd be yeah. to it. Post it on Insta after that. I yeah. will, yeah. Yeah, I will. Don't forget to tag me. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on before I get any more work designated to me. Uh, four. Well, listen, I have work as well. I have two films to go and watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Joy, would you rather die peacefully in your sleep or be mysteriously assassinated? at a dinner party and Ooh. have a novel written about your debt Ooh. oh my god um oh they'd have a few day with novel titles for you. murdered so like joy murdered a game of cluedo murdered by joy or no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well i feel like that would be fun for those that were around me and it wouldn't be as traumatic if it was like Ooh. a little cluedo game and you know there was a little book about it and would my face be on the cover Probably, yeah. Now, oh, yeah, the downside the to this is you do get murdered. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we'll go with the book. We'll go with the novel thing. I think that yeah, would be pretty cool. I understand, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, My ego is too big. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be murdered. Um, <laughs> what would you call the book, actually, about your murder, Mark? Uh, oh. This is the man, of course, who changed his name last week, Joy, to Mark Halp Pinball Machine. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I love it. I it's actually, unbelievable. I don't, you know, I don't call like my that. phone at, at night. But I was in bed and I was just thinking about. I was in bed thinking about my own name. And I was thinking Mark Halpin, and I was like, Pin. I wonder if could I make my name longer? Because I was thinking like people have two second names. I was like Mark Halpin, and I was like Mark Halpin Head, and Mark Halpin Ball, Mark Halpin Ball Machine. So then I changed my name. I got my phone out then. And I was like, I have to do this now because I'll forget it in the morning. So I went and done that. Where was I before that? Murder or mystery? What would I yeah, call what it? Yeah. Talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'd call my murder mystery novel Avenge Me by Mark Halpin. Avenge, so, me. avenge me. So then I'd have other people going out and trying to, you know, avenge me. What would yours be called? Oh, I don't know. The mysterious tale of Michael Dwyer's death. <laughs> 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 Traditional. I can see it on the red carpet now. Um I'll be there and I'll be the one who killed you and I'll be like Yeah, you know, I just I'm starting a charity for myself. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Joy number five, who is your favourite hurler? Oh, who is my favourite hurler? Um do I have to say like someone local? Like should I say local, support local or No, no. In general. I can or in ever, general, all life. time. It can be Christy Ring. Um, I like Seamus Callanan from... Oh, should I say that, though? Because he's from Tip. Ah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, uh, uh, And <laughs> girls, then. Oh. Don't forget the girls. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to say Josie Dwyer. Oh. Okay, Michael. Oh, Janie. I wrote um, down my answer. You're not oh, copying right, my okay. answer. He, it's, I know it's a typical one, but I was just going to go with it. The first one that came into my head was Henry Shefflin, and that's it. I'm yeah, it. yeah, that is it. Mine is under 11 James Flood. He had this big yellow helmet, and he used to solo, and he was the fittest man on the field, and he used to bomb through the centre. He was like Con Callanan in football. He just go straight down the middle with the big yellow helmet, and he'd drop it down and run through lads, and he was deadly. So that's my answer. And do you know what? Like anything that James Flood does, here he goes. It's a flash flood. He's just coming out of nowhere here, Joy. I can't stop him. We can't stop him, can we, Mark? No. No. I'm telling you, there are gobshites out there. And they really, they're 
getting on my again at the minute holy god it all comes down to facebook competitions right now i want to know what kind of f***ing idiot thinks that uh f***ing, what's their face uh pc world or curries or someone like that a facebook page that was set up yesterday and only has one post is legitimate f***ing deal same with them holidays and shit like that. How stupid are people? Like, my God, you do not need to be tech savvy to f***ing realise it's a fake competition. Gobshites is all they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That I is glorious. <laughs> yeah, I don't listen to them before we go on air now. And it's better, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is better to hear it fresh. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, James has given out about that to me before we even started doing this podcast. I've oh, right. given out about that. But <laughs> James has entered competitions on Facebook for BMWs before. Oh, has he? Yeah, yeah I remember oh. wishing him well in the comment section. <laughs> but uh, I agree anyway. Do you agree? Yeah. I, I'm not emotionally involved as emotionally involved as James is, but sure. Yeah, people should be more wary when it comes to sharing things on Facebook. Why would they? They're only pressing the fucking share button. Like, it's not as if they lost anything by pressing it. Uh, Joy, what do you think? <laughs> Joy, what do you think? What was the question? <laughs> well, do you agree or well, do you there was, disagree? There was no question. <laughs> <laughs> do you agree or disagree that people should check where the posts they share on Facebook are coming from if they're entering a competition? If, look, with sharing things on social media if it's something serious mm. absolutely check yourself check where it's coming from but if it's like as harmless as a competition I don't see what's wrong with just sharing the post <laughs> I mean there's no harm in it if you don't like the person block them you don't have to look <laughs> at Mr. Flood you know what I mean Whoa. <laughs> more of that that's great good good point Joy thank you <laughs> uh, the next question actually was the road to El Dorado or Bartok do you, have, do you ever see Bartok? No. no. <laughs> Joy, have you seen Bartok? It goes without saying, I, I, I haven't seen Bartok. Bartok was a little white bat from Russia. And I can't remember what he did or what happened, but I just remember him. So we'll skip that question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joy, do you prefer nightclubs or pubs? Pubs. Yes. Without a shadow of... You know, when it's like a Thursday evening and you've gone in for one, you're not really thinking much and then there's a man in the corner with a guitar and everyone's just merry even though you're all going to be dying in for work tomorrow and it's just good buzz. That's my favourite. Yeah. Mm. I hope you went with me on that journey as I described that so vividly. I did, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see it. I, I could see it. <laughs> I know I was in a gory pub anyway. I'm sure yeah, you were as well. downstairs and Katie Daly is there oh. actually. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, Michael, what do you reckon? Yeah, you'd be a nightclub man. Nightclub? <laughs> when were, I, no, I'm not Remember that time man. we were in Ibiza? <laughs> oh, sorry, Ashley's not meant to know about that, sorry. Um, we were in... Uh, and those drugs were not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be a pub man as well myself. I was never like, I was never a big nightclub man. I didn't yeah. like it because I can't dance. So I just drank too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next, do you like airports? I love airports. Do you remember airports? Love airports. Oh, <laughs> no, do you know what I always do? Anytime I'm going on holidays, I will deliberately book a really, really early flight mm. purely for the novelty of having a pint at like quarter past four in the morning. Yes. All right. <laughs> I love it. Did you see actually recently? Do you know um, when all the pubs closed, but the airports are still open? Did you see people buying really, really cheap one way flights and getting past the gates and purely just sitting in the lounge and drinking? Did you see that on uh, Facebook? (laughs) It was such a good idea. They were buying like really cheap Ryanair flights for like 15 quid purely to just get through the terminal so they could sit and have a few pints. That's very good. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, clever. Um, next Francis Brennan from the telly or Bishop Brennan from the altar oh she doesn't yes. know the Bishop Brennan do you not know who Bishop Brennan is or Francis Brennan <laughs> do you know either of them Francis Brennan wait now Francis Brennan is the interior guy yes yeah, yes yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I love that <laughs> I love that I love yeah, 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 yeah. I love this Michael this, this paper tube says here John <laughs> love it love it love it 
Do you remember when he was on the Late Late Show and he got lost? He was trying to show people how to make a how to make a duvet, how to put on a duvet sheet, and he got lost inside the duvet sheet. That has to be on YouTube. It was brilliant. Oh, very good. But Bishop Brennan was from Father Ted. Uh, no, I mean Bishop Brennan as in our Bishop Brennan of Fern's Diocese. Oh, all right. Did you mean oh, Bishop Brennan as well? <coughs> sorry? Bishop Brennan confirmed me. He did, he did me too. Or confirmed me too. Confirmed no? case. Confirmed uh, case. <laughs> last question on my section, Joy, and it's a big one. What is it's your favourite song about the moon? <laughs> sorry, the line broke there. What did you say? What is your favourite song about the moon? Do you know that one? You know that one um, about the moon? You know... Um, There's two songs. Oh my god! I wish the listeners could see my face right now. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. So I'll give you two options: uh, dancing in the moonlight, or you saw the whole of the moon. Uh, dancing in the moonlight. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. yeah. Moon River is mine. What's moon yours? River. Man? Oh, yeah, an outlier. Oh, it mine's the you saw the whole of the moon. <laughs> oh, you saw the whole of the moon. <laughs> And thus ends my whatever that was. technical part of the show, Joy. Now. Joy, you're somehow you're studying a master's in a tr- technical technological university, <laughs> but you're also a lecturer. How? Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so I'm uh, studying my master's in sports science in TUD Telecampus, and as a part of your master's, you have to give back hours. So you're an associate lecturer, so you're under a leading lecturer, and you're kind of like their their wing woman, I suppose, or their right hand man, or whatever way you want to say it. So um, I at the moment I'm um, lecturing practical skills and nutrition, so first and third years. So it's great. I love it. Right, practical skills and nutrition. That's that's deadly and. Like, now that you're at this stage in your career, like, when you look back on all the jobs you've done, like all the waitressing in the amber and in the hotel and like all these type of jobs and to get to this point where you are now, it must it must feel great like that, you know, you're striving towards a goal and something that you want to aspire towards and, and work. Oh, in. yeah, definitely. I mean, like when I was working in the hotel or whatever the case it was be, it was always more so as much as I loved it and loved my job and, and loved my colleagues, it was always for me a means to an end. Right. It was always a reason why I was doing it. It was put myself through college. It was to pay for my rent. It was to pay for my fees. And do you know when you're working in a certain environment and you know as much as you love the people you work for and with, it's just not where you see yourself yeah. long term kind of a thing. Yeah. So I always knew I wanted to get into like the fitness industry and sport and but now, because you have to lecture as a part of your master's, you kind of figure out both sides. So you figure out the study inside because you're still a student, but you also figure out like the lecture inside of things. And you kind of you, it learn, you, you learn a lot about yourself and your patients and how you can help people. And I think lecturing is probably where I'll end up. Please, God. If really? Have me. Yeah, yeah, I so think you... so. I think so. Wow. OK. That'd be fascinating to see, like, because at the moment, like, not only are you doing the academic side and, and studying, but you're also uh, tutoring as well and uh, training. Like, it, it would be incredible to see uh, both of those uh, channels of growth, you know, um, go from strength to strength. Like, uh, what what do you think about that? Like, could you be yeah, a, a, a trainer with a doctorate or that type of thing? Like, Yeah, like, it is... Um I think it's an incredible opportunity that the college offers you. I don't know if any other colleges do. I'm sure they do. Um, But I do think it's incredible that you get a feel for both sides. You're a student, you know, you're learning, you're doing your own research and whatnot, but you're also helping other students. And I think it's great as well that you can be so relatable for them and you can tell them, listen, I did my undergrad here. I was a third year as well. I get how stressful it is, how difficult it is. You know, and they they can relate to you a lot more. And I think you can help them and you can kind of as much as you're helping them academically through their studies you're also helping them see that if you just keep going you can get to wherever the hell you want it to be whether it be lecturing or physio or whatever it is that you're doing just keep on swimming and you'll get there eventually you know what I mean it's great I'm so lucky I do love what I have to say Deadly Mark can you uh, recognise some of that experience of joy since you're almost there from your um, yeah, all other jobs are bollocks, really. I have no interest. <laughs> I've done a few other jobs and just all of them, I think, you know, like, I'm not going to be here 
yeah. for I don't plan on being here for the long term so I don't really I think you're actually care. scarred from your previous I know we've discussed your experience with invoicing previously but yeah. Mark every now and again most recently a few days ago I mentioned the prospect of us having a meeting and I think you still have issues with the word meeting you're like, like no no we don't do that just send me a whatsapp and we'll take care of this you know yeah. uh, but you, I, you, you've probably put your finger on it you know that we the office environment has kind of invented these things that we don't need just to you know keep you in their uh, grip if it will be uh, what, what do you think yeah it's look and I know people who love their office jobs and who enjoy it and you know they love fucking sales and selling <laughs> stuff and yes I hit this number and my phone does this and I send this email at this time and it's class and but like it's not me I hate it all that like and they're like so it'd be wrong of me to say like you know it's better to do this than that it's just what I find interesting what Joy follows what she finds interesting and like uh, like as Drake our mentor says you only live once so what's the point in wasting your one existence doing stuff you don't like you might as well find something that engages you while you're doing it and, and keep doing that and stay engaged until you die yeah yeah uh, Joy have you any thoughts on that now no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, like Mark said, there's some jobs that you couldn't bear to do and it's someone's world. You know, they love it and you're just like, how the hell are they doing that job? It's very individual. It's very each to their own. And I think it's important as well to note that you don't have to be 23, 24, 25 to figure out what you want to do. You can be 40 and realize this isn't for me and change. You know, yeah. um, I think it's 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 really important to say that when you figure out though, what it is that you want to do, whatever age it might be, definitely go for it because this is not a trial run. We do only live once. As cringy as that sounds, but just go for it. Balls to the wall and just go for it. Like. Yeah. yeah. How do you, um, you must enjoy, you, you strike me as a real people person, Jai. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Thank like, you. <laughs> but like, I don't know if that's a compliment. <laughs> well, to try and figure out, like, I, I, what I find fascinating about personal trainers is that every coach is different in their approach, and I know that's probably another cliche, but you just see it in different traits. Some may be more personal, some may be more interested in the technique, some may be freer and more relaxed, and say just. Uh, you know, do whatever style of that exercise is. Once you're doing it, you'll you'll get there. So, like. Uh, do, do you I, to get to the root of the question you must really uh, enjoy seeing how a person gets from A to B through your inspiration and encouragement uh, do, you, do you follow me? Yeah definitely like like you said each personal trainer is different there's no two the same we take different methods we approach things differently you'd see a lot on on Facebook and Instagram and no disrespect to coaches or trainers that do it a lot of people are up for their four week transformations or their six weeks transformations or whatever the case may be it's not something that I do with my clients um, I look at a very lifestyle approach there's nothing we don't do diets we don't do mad training plans we don't do anything unrealistic it's small progress over time and patience is the key because the thing is whether you're with me for three months six months or a year I want you to be able to walk away and think I can do this on my own I've been thought enough inside and outside the gym that I'm confident and I can do it on my own and it's a lifestyle change with me and my clients but to see like even something so simple, like last week, say they shoulder press AKG for 10. This week they're pressing out 12 for 10. Just little things weekly. It just, it blows my mind, but it's, it's definitely all credit to them. I just help them. It's definitely their hard work and dedication. And I'm so lucky that the clients that I have are absolute fucking superstars. They're the best in the world. They're the most hard work and dedicated people. And they make my job easy, to be honest. They're, they're gems. I'm so lucky. I really am. Hmm. Mark, you're nodding. That was lovely. It was lovely. No, it was. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. Right? <laughs> yeah, that actually was. That was very good. And like you're saying, it's not about, you know, this six week shred and, you know, no mm. carbs before marbs and things like that. It's like you find the person's low hanging fruit and you try to get them to that. And then you find the next level, what the next goal is. And then it's a lifestyle thing. Exactly. It puts people on a different path and a positive trajectory. And then they roll with it like an upward snowball. Ooh. That was a weird way. I don't know why that image came into my that head. That was a nicer like, way than I said it. I'm going to take that, Mark, if you don't mind. Upward small ball. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On, Mark. Momentum. Momentum. I you, it's like you 
push them off the cliff and watch them roll. Ooh. Not really, Ooh. but... <laughs> <laughs> My new tagline. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, do you find it fascinating that now you're in this research area of it that... What in the name of fucking Jesus? Your poster fell down. <laughs> my mother oh, no. told me this evening. I bet you that's going to fall down the seat. <laughs> there we go. There you go. That's good. It was so lovely it's to it. look at. Oh, yeah. oh, it's gone. And we're back in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> the heater's actually broken as well. Yeah, so, yeah, off. yeah. We'll go a bit blue in the face now as well. But, <laughs> Joy, I was going to ask, like, I sports science as a master's, like, um, it must be exciting to think that you're going to study this for two years and come out with a really strong postgraduate qualification as a result of it yeah um i think ireland is a little bit behind in sports science um if you're in this industry you'll know you'll know like canada australia all the bigger cities have all the technology with groups as sub elite and elite with county and inter-county rather as in ireland we purely put the science mainly into county teams and county groups and it's the the cream of the crop that you work with here and um, so i suppose the data that you collect is obviously the best of the best um, and it's an incredible industry to be in in the sense that because we're just starting it's all new it's all fresh the research that I'm working on there's actually it actually hasn't been done before it has been done on male populations but it hasn't been done on female populations um, and it's exciting to kind of get an insight into the female athlete I specialize in GAA so it's exciting to see the science behind female Gaelic sport and how our body works like that and why and, and the numbers, I suppose, behind it. You know, it is it is incredible. And if you have any kind of an interest or you're interested in GAA or sport, it's one thing watching it, but it's one thing to understand the science behind it, if that makes sense. It's, it's, an example it's, it's or unreal. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it is incredible. I have to say, I'm very lucky. Um, very lucky. It, it's difficult in the sense that it's very hard. Like at the moment with research, I'm comparing to the female's male counterparts I'm comparing to female um, hockey teams. I'm comparing to female rugby teams because there's such little done on female GAA. And that's not me being controversial. That's just matter of fact. Um, there's very little done. So to be able to, I suppose, lead that research, it's it's mind-blowing. It really is. And so are you looking at, say, the differences in what uh, what a player exerts or what, what muscles they're using during uh, one sport and another? What, what, what's the contrast that you're focusing on? No, so my main research is basically looking at the, of the science behind female Gaelic sport. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the training demands and match play demands of a female GAA player. I'm doing that through the use of GPS systems. So I'm looking at um, their output within training and match play. And then coaches can implement this in order to allow their training to meet them demands. So when I say that I was comparing in the sense that when I'm looking for previous research to back my own research up, it's non-existent. Yeah. Mm. And what's the bigger picture? Like uh, when you say about female sport and uh what comes to mind straight away is the drop off yeah, like when when like when it comes to gated players I think there is a drop off when uh, between 16 and 18 like what is it is it going to be linked to that or like what do you think this, the purpose of the science is is it to inform coaches in training means or is it a broader thing of how we can get more people playing sport in general like what's at the moment, mine isn't a broader scale thing. Mine is purely so that coaches can implement correct training. Um, mine is to give us an insight into the demands placed on the female athlete um, and h- how they need to prepare adequately for it, how they need to um, cope, whether it's training or match play. I Like on my research, the great thing about research is it doesn't ever have to stop. You know, you might find the answer to one thing, but you can keep going and find another study and another study. Does my study directly link to the drop off rates in um, youth athletes? No, it doesn't. That would be a completely different study. But could there be a link? I don't know, but it could be something that maybe you'll see me doing in another year's time. I don't know. I'm a nerd. I love learning. So you'd be surprised what I'm going to come out with um, in a year or two years time. Yeah. 
do you sorry Joy okay. do you look at the recovery as well or is it just sort of the analytics of a match no I don't look at the recovery per se I'm more sports performance than I would be rehab prehab physio nutrition I'm purely sports performance um, with the GPS data that I use I look at training and match play um, scenarios so I look at their max sprints I look at their max output I look at their you know um I'm getting tongue tied now. <laughs> Looking at um all their kind of performance based metrics is what I do and where my my passion lies. Could I give you an idea of prehab, rehab? Could I give you an idea of what you're asking for? I could, but it it's kind of beyond my scope of practice. Mm. It would be more an educated guess than it would be my my field of research. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So using yeah. the GPS, you're extracting statistics and all that. And w- like that kind of feeds into um, a good discussion topic in the form of like, say recently, Mark, you're back on, you're using the Whoop Strap, which you highly recommend. And one of its features is that you're, uh, well, maybe actually, is is the Whoop connected to your calories? How do you, do you input what calories you have? or what No, foods? I input the calories into my fitness pal, but Whoop has given me uh, active feedback on how many I'm burning, how much calories I'm burning. Yeah, like you, you have, you've changed your mind on fit, my fitness pal and calorie count. Would that be right? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I actually want to retract the statement I made earlier on in or like a, make- episode six or something. I said that okay. uh, it can be, it's actually, it can be mentally unhealthy to track your calories. I don't fully mean it, but like I, I have a softer approach to it now because I've been doing more practice of it myself, more reading on it. And it's definitely like important to not track them like to down to the number like but just like get people should have an idea of how how much they should eat versus how much they should um partake in activity because yeah. it's mm. a lot different to what general people think it is if you ask your mother or father like or just anyone like yeah. anyone uh how much calories they think is in a food and how much they're eating in a day they're probably eating twice as many calories as mm. they actually need and they don't know that they're not they don't know that they are yeah like i I consider myself not to be like you know bragging about it but i consider myself fairly active and i eat about i'd say about two-thirds of what i was eating before i started tracking my calories and i'm more active now and i mm. feel better for eating less so i just think that that's um I forget what your question was now because I've been rambling. <laughs> well, it was about statistics and their use in fitness. So, like, I think you're... Oh, well, I love it, yeah. I've gone completely obsessed with it. Yeah, well, not in a, yeah maybe in a bad way, but I love it. Like. <laughs> but you're seeing the output from it. Like, I think while you're on a personal level using MyFitnessPal, these are accessible apps. We could all use them, whether it's true or fitness trackers or anything. You don't have to be studying the MA or whatever. What, you're, you have that true everyday use. Joy, you extract that through the GPS trackers mm. or what What more when it comes to, how in detail are you getting when it comes to the in the, the GPS trackers on the, on the shirts of players? Very simply put, when you have a GPS unit on your back, there is no hiding. Right. Yeah. I, if you tell me you gave 100% effort in training, I can actually tell you whether you did or not. Yeah. And that's, a, that's, it's just that simple. Like with your, your max sprints, with your total distance and with your all overall output, you could come to me absolutely sweating and you can say, I, I, I have had enough. I can't do anymore. I can tell you whether you can or not. Yeah. A lot of the time as well, like, like your mind tires before your body does. Mm. You know, when you go for a run and you're like, oh, lads, I'm fucked. I can't do anymore. I can guarantee you, you can't. It's just mm. your mind telling you you can't. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of, it's interesting as well because it gives you an idea of the player's mindset. Yeah. Mm. Because I can see you've only done 60%. You have so much more in the tank. And it's important that when we're training, whether it's team-based sport, whether it's individual training, whether we're doing, you know, a lot of running or weightlifting or whatever the case may be, there's no point in lifting a weight if you don't have the correct mindset to do so. You need to be able to tell yourself, I'm going to fucking lift it. I'm going to be able to do it. Or when you're really, really tired and you're fatigued, you tell yourself, you know what? One more minute, one more minute, one more minute. And I get to see the science behind that. And it's incredible. And I try to implement that in my clients, oh. you know, um, every day in in training when we're in the gym. No, I don't put GPS on my clients. No. But it's just the mindset thing when I can see that they're tired. I'm like, but I know we have more in you. 
you know, okay. it's, it's getting that correct mindset. Never be fearful of the weight. Never be fearful of the exercise. Tell yourself you can fucking do it. And I guarantee you. you can. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, you're, you're I got connection. very into that there. Yeah, Jesus it was brilliant. <laughs> and just at the right moment, the connection just wavered a little. It was just, it was oh, peak lovely. 2020. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd um, say my face was lovely there. <laughs> <laughs> but just, uh, it's fascinating that, you know, sports science, it's for peak performance, really. Then when you like encapsulate what your work is involved in your, you know, your it's to try and see that the top level teams, whatever the sport is, can use the science to uh, establish peak performance. Isn't that the, the correct? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. That's essentially and, what it is. Reckon, and yeah. then when someone approaches you and Tala, what you're able to offer them is, you know, distilling that down for everyday use. And that's uh, yeah. That's the benefit for the client. That's fascinating now. Isn't it great that like this has become, well, maybe it's maybe it's just my bubble, but I feel like, you know, p- personal trainers are cropping up more and more around the around the communities across the county. What do you like? Mm. Do you see, think it's more like, is there many people in that course, Mark, that you're doing or? Yeah. Yeah. They're from all over the country now. Like, yeah. 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 Like it, it's just, it's brilliant to see people take an investment in their health and, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I do think as well that personal training, it's such a saturated market at the moment. Right. Like, as you said, there's so many people who want to be a personal trainer. And my advice to anyone who's going to do it is do it, but make sure you have something about you that nobody else does. Right. Do something that that will make you stand out to Joe Soap beside you. Offer your clients something so much more than weight loss. Yeah. And you'll fly it. Do you know what I mean? Mark, are you doing a, a course, is it? Yeah, I'm uh, up in Elite at the minute. I have three weeks left in it. So Class. Is it for a personal training? Yeah. Yeah, it's time oh, for so, Unreal. Yeah. It's good now. It's part time. I was doing the online. Well, it's online two evenings a week, and I'm up there on a Saturday as well. So, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I've only two weeks left, and then I have my exams on the 19th, and I'm finished. Nice. But at least. Well, if you ever need a, an assignment or a hand. Give now. me a show. Thank you very much. If I do my Aren't walk, you you'll do my, me on you'll do my assignment. <laughs> um, there was another thing that... Oh, sorry, now it's gone out of the head. Oh, yeah. Christmas is coming up. Uh, what, what advice are you saying to people with Christmas coming up? I'm delighted that the heat is back working. Has come back. back. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's the resurrection here in Barrow Castletown. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So I, was I was thinking this didn't look as blue all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Christmas, like, is like what is now. <laughs> Sorry, get the question. Like, say if someone that wanted to, you know, start dieting or um, improving their fitness now, is that probably the best time given the, you know, the lockdown Christmas that we're going to have? It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never, it now it or doesn't never. matter. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, this whole, like, it's a new month you know or it's a new year or don't do not hop on that bandwagon yes it is a new month you can set new intentions you can set new goals but you can start the second day in or the fourth day in or the tenth day in. it doesn't have to be the first day it doesn't matter that it's a week before christmas it doesn't matter that it's a week before your holidays if you want it enough there is no timeline you're going to do it and my advice to people who are going to try keep their nutrition on track or their training on track throughout christmas don't be afraid to fucking live yeah like, yes, if you have a goal, keep it in the back of your mind. But go out for your beer. Eat your Christmas dinner. Life is too short to restrict yourself so much that you're not going to have a Christmas dinner. Like, yeah. do you know, like, and I will be saying that to all my clients. Listen, we've put in the work. We've put in the effort. We're in a healthier place now where guilt is not attached to anything that we're going to consume. We are going mm. to enjoy our beer. We're going to enjoy our food. And when we get back at it, we're going to just say, look, we had a great Christmas and let's move on. Brilliant, Joy. You're very good at the one. You're you're a female flash flood. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Michael! I'm so Sorry. delayed. Even the cat was alarmed at that. You no, know, but you you are extremely good at distilling a message and just bang power message. You right? Uh, you said something there, and uh, it was oh guilt attaching to it. Like um, this is one more thing to come with the whole calorie thing. Like to, this is a question to both of you. Calorie counting, fit my fitness pal, you could still do that. You could do a little bit of exercise and you still might not see the result in terms of weight loss. Um, that can be, you could still be going for your walks. You can still, and 
do you think that sometimes it can be a deeper issue when it comes to weight loss that there might be something else bubbling beneath the surface that it could be you know baggage it could be anything um I, this is i don't have much any i don't have any expertise in this area this is just a layman talk like a pub talk mark any thoughts well, what do you, do you mean if you like you're in a calorie deficit and you're exercising and you're still not losing weight? Yeah, I, I don't think you so. Don't I think it. it could be a mental thing that can cause people to gain weight and to not want to lose it, and then it can be a vicious cycle that way. But I don't think the emotion, <clears throat> your emotions, can really affect the science of it, right? Too much, yeah. But uh, I do like guilt is, as Joy said, is a horrible thing. Someone told me a couple of years ago actually, and I still remember it that guilt causes cancer. That like the hole in that stuff like that in gets into your cells, it gets into your DNA, and it just it kills you. It eats it from eats you from the inside out. So like, yeah, this it's healthy if like things are bothering you to talk about them to get them out, out physically out of your system. Yeah, and out into the world, and then we resolve it, and then you find out when you actually say these things, there's answers if you ask questions. Yeah. So if something's going on with you and you don't know what it is and it's eating you alive inside, speak to anyone about it. You don't even have to know them. Yeah. Get it out of your system. Talk about it. Hash it out with someone else. You'll get to the root of it and then you'll solve it. You'll realize it's not that big of a deal. Amazing, man. You're rising to Joy's flash flood level. I'm not going to <laughs> say that you would be a flash flood. <laughs> now, answer that, John. Yeah, I think. <laughs> um. If someone was in a calorie deficit, they were training, they were, their nutrition was on plan and they're not losing weight. Is this what you're saying? Yeah, but I'm kind of just open, opening up the discussion to a more broader approach to health. Like you're, you're, you're not, well, what is the purpose of your yoga in the morning when you're not walking? That's all for, you see, this is where I'm going to get to this. That's all for my mindset. I need to start my day with a clear mindset. I won't go to bed on an issue or an argument because I will not allow it to affect my next day. I take my day in four stages, morning, afternoon, evening and night. If my morning is affected, it will not affect the three other stages. Likewise, if my evening is, I won't allow it to affect the last stage of my day. I take everything in four stages. I don't carry anything across because it's unhealthy. So my walk in the morning, my yoga in the morning, whatever it's be, it's, it's purely for me time for me and to clear my head and to work on my mindset so to relay that into your question there is obviously a science behind why they're not you know why there isn't weight loss or whatever the case may be but it's multifactorial it's not just maybe the scales hasn't changed but maybe they've lost an inch on their waist Mm. maybe the scale hasn't changed but when they look in the mirror they feel happier so the scales, okay, it might not deviate, but maybe their mood has, maybe their mindset has become more positive. Maybe they're the jeans that couldn't fit them now do, you know, now they close, maybe they don't feel as tight this week, you know, and, and if it was a case that it was all about the scales, I don't think you have the right mindset going in. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you know why you're doing it. You have to know why you're doing it. And you have to know what your method of of accountability is, whether it is the scales, whether it is measurements, whether it is a picture, whether it is jeans, whatever the case may be. But I don't think it's just they haven't lost weight. Is it science or is it their mindset? No, I think it's I think there's a thousand and one things that you have to take off. Your approach, I've never heard that before morning after. It's such a simple little tool, but the morning, afternoon, even it's a night. It's a very simple way of living in the moment as well. Like, um, do you find that? Yeah, like last kind of at the start of this year maybe do you know when you just go through the motions life isn't going well for you you know um and um a guy that actually I'm good friends with in my gym I came in um to work one day and I was just all over the place and he's really into Reiki and healing and and spirits and I personally am a skeptic I don't believe in any of it but he just said to me he said sit down sit down and I was like oh here we go with this shite now you know I was like this isn't going to work but go on anyway and he said it to me he said your morning is bad don't let it affect the rest of your day and I was like sure of course I'm going to you know let it affect my day my day is now ruined you know and he said take it in four stages morning afternoon evening and night and it's that simple if your morning is bad for whatever reason you woke up on the wrong side of the bed or you know you got a bad text or a bad email or you're feeling overwhelmed sort it out there and then have a word with yourself check in with yourself it doesn't have to be fixed 
but just go into your next stage on a more positive mindset. Okay, you know what? My morning wasn't great, but I'm not going to let it affect the rest of my day. Because at the end of the day, it's the 4th of December 2020. We're never going to see that date again. So there's no point in ruining every other day because of small little things, you know. Brilliant, John. That's good. That's unbelievable. We've had a wide range of discussion. I think, oh, we're kind of good on time i think we're we're go- this is actually a prime time joy for your horoscope now i actually <laughs> normally prepare horoscope actually i don't know why sometimes it's freaky i i think your uh uh what's march is, is your birthday in march yeah and you are that's pisces then correct okay how do you know that <laughs> i don't know that's weird i'm sorry <laughs> Anyway, Michael, your birthday is in. I'm going to say August. Oh right, well, it's first of January. But look, I'm sure Leo is somewhere in the middle of my ether there. I was somewhere. going to say August or the first of January. That was my yeah. second option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So normally I prepare these, but uh, so forgive me, Joy, if no, I he had, he had okay. one written, but you're channeling something. At yeah, the I, I, I actually yes, I'm going to. So yes, I, I think I have something coming here. <laughs> <sighs> Romy said that. <laughs> Romy. <laughs> <laughs> is Rumi? Is it here, Chinese philosopher? <laughs> no, no, sorry. Uh, what's that yoke that they talk about? Computers. Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Okay. So Sanskrit says that, it, like our breath in life, we have to, um, you know, the breath. We inhale it, and we can keep. But we can't. If we hold on to our breath, we can't do it. But we have to keep breathing in. And the idea is that, yeah, keep do on, the it's <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm definitely garbling some of this. Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, that's brilliant! But <laughs> come on! Oh, sorry, sorry. So you know, the idea is that we can't hold on to the breath that we take in. So this, with this in mind, remember, Joy, that Pisces is a water sign, <laughs> and you have to go with the flow of life. Acceptance is the key as this new moon unfurls in December, the 12th month. Oh, watch out. The sixth house of horrors is coming. But wait, never fear. You will open the door of tomorrow and attack the day with fresh vigor, with a new scissors of life. Be it your mindset, be it your fitness. May you seize the moment as you march on, meeting Mercury retrograde, clashing side on in a, as we go around the bend with no hardship shoulder and we meet the first <laughs> quadrant of Sagittarius that will fall in collision with Mercury after Venus's plummet back into your ascended chart and look at the end of the day make sure that you have enough milk in the fridge because you may run out next week I think that's yeah, enough you turn the heater back on doing that <laughs> Michael, that Hello. was beautiful. That was absolutely glorious. It's the first seance we've had in here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Normally we have been the but that, that got something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Mark, have you a few bits and pieces uh, there for us? Yeah, no, we won't do this as a game because it's kind of hard, but here's just some quotes I came across <laughs> during the week. These were meant to be for our last episode, but uh, our last episode didn't exactly go to plan. So, uh, <laughs> um, Shock horror. <laughs> yeah. Here is a uh, quote they misunderestimated me. Who do you reckon that was? Are you giving what? clues to who uh, these people this are? This is a former president of America. They miss... Misunderestimated me. I don't think misunderestimated is a word. <laughs> is that a word? Yeah, it's, no, it's not. Out. Am I to guess who it is? Yeah. Not sure, yeah. Well, I've... I've actually uh, sorry I've done the thing Mark where I look at the question the and that's what you know what okay. I do so I'm going to give a clue or a hint when 9-11 was announced he was in a classroom and he had the book upside down and he pretended to read it um, with the shock I suppose it was shock I'm not going to blame the man for he had a shoe thrown at him at one stage as well in a press conference didn't he oh yes yes mm. that was something to do with something going on in the Middle East I think or something oh, I have no idea oh, right, the okay. Middle East threw a shoe at him no, like, it has no clue <laughs> Right, okay. George W. Bush. Um, okay. Next okay. one is what Walmart do they sell like wall stuff? <laughs> oh my god, I think I know that. Wait now, <laughs> Paris Hilton. Yes. Oh my oh god. Oh, yeah. Well done. Oh yeah. my gosh, that was incredible. Okay, I don't know important things, but I know the gossip. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the next one is 
I think that gay marriage is something that should be held between a man and a woman. Oh, that sounds like Donald Trump, does it? Uh, I was going to say, is it Donald Trump? He is a politician in America who is a politician because he used to be a celebrity. Ooh. He was the governor of California. Oh, there's a clue. <gasps> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Well he done. has a pet pony now. You see that? He's a pet pony and a pet donkey that sort of follow him around. Really? Yeah. What, what's his famous line? I'll be back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> was that him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Uh, Whenever I watch TV and I see those poor starving kids all over the world, I can't help but cry. I mean, I would love to be skinny like that, but not with all those flies and death and stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so oh, is it it a no, a clue for this one their own shite. is she has she? a Christmas single that is played every year. One of the Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Yeah. Wow. Jamie. Stop. Yeah. Mariah Carey said that. <laughs> Oh, that's um, so bad. The next one is uh, a personal favourite. Listen, everybody's entitled to my opinion. That's Donald Trump. No, no. <laughs> Imagine if all these were Donald Trump. Uh, everyone is entitled to my opinion. Here is a clue. She oh. sang so- Time goes by so slowly, slowly. Time Madonna. Go- yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Michael, are you supposed to be guessing these as well? Yeah, but poorly. Yeah. Very poorly. Though. This is a one you moment show. You just keep shouting out Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald, Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> I'll give a clue. Donald Trump is not on this list. Oh, is he not? Wow. wow. Well done. No. I could, it would have been any. It would have been a cop out to put him on this list. Uh, I got mad right. mark there. Um, right, Michael, you take the next one. Right, this oh, is for you now. Come on, right, bring it right, home. Um, okay. okay. I'm trained now, I'm ready. Joy has me hyped. Right, let's go. Mindset, yeah. positive yeah. mindset. <laughs> you've got I, Yeah, you've your horoscope. I've the psych- his, uh, psychology. <laughs> I've never really wanted to go to Japan simply because I don't like eating fish and I know that's popular out there in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Can I get Michael a clue? Um... Is it a singer? Yeah. Male? No. Female singer? Uh, you keep thinking there, I'll find a clue. Janey, lads. If I gave a guess, it'd be all... I, no, it's not her. Female singer. Um, Where is she from? Is that... <laughs> Do you know who it is? Michael! Oh, I did the thing yeah, again. I'm so is. bad at that. I did the thing. I saw who you were playing back. I'm sorry. It's Britney Spears. <laughs> it's Britney Spears. That's cheating. I just destroy games. Mark, is, Mark copped it before I did it. Um, well. I've been noticing gravity ever since I was very young. <laughs> Donald Trump. Noticing gravity ever since I was very young. I actually don't know what this lady does. I think she's an actress. I think she was a fish in a film about a car wash. Oh. Oh my I god. The car wash. That's the fourth film. You know that film? What's. Uh, what? Shark Tale. Shark Tale. <laughs> yes. That's the fourth film. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now do you Angelina know Angelina Jolie. A... Oh fuck, well then that's the wrong person I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, got, we found the fourth We found the fourth thing That's worth it The fourth film uh, That was Cameron Diaz <laughs> Oh She was in that oh, movie I think She was I in think, Shrek as well Wasn't she is, Was that Cameron Diaz Was Fiona in Shrek Was it I think so <laughs> Okay Next is um, I guess I'll just Fade into Bolivian Oh <laughs> um, Male or female Male Male Clues. Uh, clues. Um, I broke my back. It's final. Two use. Don't get that. I hope no. one listeners get that because I'll sound ridiculous otherwise. Can I phone a friend? Um, face tattoo. <laughs> the hangover. Oh. Um, the, 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 he the fought hangover. recently. Fought. Fought. He came out of retirement. Mike Tyson Yes Oh Mike Tyson was going to fade into Bolivian oh I'm shouting guys I'm so sorry I hope your <laughs> listeners aren't listening to your phone We love, no, we love enthusiasm yeah, yeah absolutely uh, Next 
I oh this is the last one I think yeah this is our last one no looking Michael no 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 um, I would write <laughs> creative genius when I go through the airport I would put that on customs forms where you just put what your title is except for two reasons it takes too long to write and sometimes I spell the word genius wrong that sounds can, like... you, can you say can you say that again okay <laughs> so I would write creative genius when I go through the airport I put that on the customs forms that's where you put where your title is except for two reasons it takes too long to write and sometimes I spell the word genius wrong it's not Kanye West is it yeah, it was uh, Kanye West I was going to say that was it one of our heroes yeah. uh, one of our heroes <laughs> I'd say he's the patron of the podcast not a patreon yet unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I think oh, the best th- that's all that's left is... Sorry? The best 30 seconds of her life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've no letters this week, no. Um, oh, a letter from the editor, sorry. Yeah, one second. One letters to the editor at paperchooses.com, Joy. That's where all these letters come in. Mark is just siphling through them there now, just seeing if we can get one of them. Rifling through, I'd say, is actually the word I was looking for. Okay. Um, yeah. Hard to pick between Hard these. To pick yeah, between yeah. these. Okay, so <laughs> this one comes in from a concerned mother. She says that um, she found a vape in her son's room. She tried to smell what was in the vape, and she says it smells like the homeless man down the road. So she reckons it could be drugs in her son's vape. Right. She wants to know should she be worried and where should she go before confronting her son. Ooh. Well, for how old is the son? Because the son could be 43 and, you know, that might be good for, the, like, for the 16 year old. But, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. The National Drugs Helpline is a good helpline if she wants to ring someone. Um, <laughs> um, she says it smells like the homeless man down the road. You know, I don't like that as well. You know, uh, help the homeless man. That's our first piece of advice from Paper Chooses. Give him the drugs. <laughs> Here, what's in this vape? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, any reasonable offers of advice here uh, have a conversation with your son I'd okay. say if you can't yeah. have a conversation with your son then that could be the reason he's using drugs in the first place Ooh. so maybe give that a go boom, that boom. might work so. right Jai come into us Um, I think I mean like so many people are doing drugs nowadays Um, it's kind of the fashion mm. Um, and I don't think th- I think the problem is we are not opening up the conversation about it. We are saying so-and-so does drugs, so-and-so does drugs, but we're not giving them a platform to speak. We're not allowing them to talk about it. Like, you know, at festivals where all these young kids are taking drugs and they're overdosing and there's so many cases of people losing their lives because of it. Instead of talking about it, why don't you have tents in festivals where God forbid this happens people have the coping mechanism, people have whatever it is that they need to bring someone back down or you know, resuscitate people or bring them back to life or whatever the case may be. So I think with your son, ha- have that conversation, have an open conversation if he's going to do it, don't scold him or give out to him for it, just have a conversation and say listen, be safe and if you ever need anything just know that I'm here, you know what I mean? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I like Sorry. to waffle no, no, you know, it's not about waffling. You have a great, uh, you have a great ability to be a lecturer. I think you know you have an ability to take a nugget and, as one of Keane's lecturers would say, bring it for a walk. You know, you have a great ability <laughs> to take that little idea and go for a little spin with it. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and then you're forty minutes, and all you did was ask me how I am, and it's like okay, so we get. It's time for the best thirty seconds of your life, Joy Quigley, and I know Lovely. this is quite. Um, emotional and in, uh, uh, inspirational to have the best 30 seconds of your life on this fine Friday evening so the, the aim of the game Joy is to mention as many I suppose we gave Cormac exercises he was our last personal trainer so probably only fair to give Joy exercises as well is it yeah so as many exercises as you can in the space of 30 seconds not, Joy not do them now name them yeah they can be what do you mean I'm just listing curls. out exercises they yeah. can be list as okay, many as you can. Okay. are we right how, wait how many did Cormac get 
Not uh, as many as the monk. That's yeah, the, I think Cormac got 14, but our, our okay. overall winner is the monk, our leader. Our leader. And how many did he get? <laughs> oh, 20. 20. Yeah. It was sensational. And he had time to ramble in between. Yeah. And, like, and St. Augustine, I believe he was the first saint I studied in college. <laughs> right. Joy is getting oh, no, ready. No, we know. I don't oh. know if I can do this. I, I don't do is well on the Is there a better topic? Tests. What's your... Well, like, you're only going to get four no, on movies, it. Joy. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's fair enough. A bit of a date book one. Yeah. <laughs> are you and ready? are you counting them? I'm counting oh, here. I have the pen. Here okay, we go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay. Um, squats, deadlifts, lunges, alternating lunges, squat pulses, lunge pulses, split squat Bulgarian split squat, crunches, flutter kicks, straight legs, uh, bicep curls, shoulder press, uh, overhead press, military press, chest press, pec flies, uh, rear delt, uh, straight arm push downs, tricep extensions, um, 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 mountain climbers, jumping jacks, um, uh, Five seconds. Uh, crunches. Um, uh, glute bridge. Think of like glute bridge. Hip thrust. <gasps> Did you use your phone for that? That was sensational. No, I'm sweating, guys. I'm absolutely sweating. My heart well, rate Mark is, is going to be sweating now. He is a lot of Oh my God, my heart rate is at 115 beats <laughs> per minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Did I have you broken let me just oh sorry recount. this is intense now sorry let's, let's quiet in the auditorium please <laughs> 26 what <laughs> wait what what was the best you're the best you're the best oh, you're the top of the leaderboard <laughs> By Unbelievable! Quite, quite a margin, and what the most surprising thing is, he took three seconds to actually say the first one. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a bit giggly. I always do that and when I'm nervous. Got 26, like giggly. which is unbelievable. That's so. If I took three seconds at the start, that's like an exercise a second. Bar. Yeah, that's not bad. Almost. That's yeah. Do I get bad. a prize? Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> but you, you, the prize you get is inflicting misery on a poor innocent monk who probably has had cocoa and is in bed by this time. But uh, yeah, how okay, do we break the news to him, Mark? Um, carrier pigeon, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know how that like information. <laughs> Joy, I, it's been a real pleasure. And do you know we've had a whole podcast and we haven't made an issue of your name? Isn't that just? Isn't that what you want? <laughs> I was waiting for it. I'm not going to lie. I thought you were going to open with something to do with it. I'm not going to go to your right, but I will. I have to close on this. Of course, Joy Quigley, one of your defining attributes in your, you know, in your great uh, CV and your, you know, resume, as the Americans would call it, is that you were an Enniscorthy Strawberry Rose uh, a few years ago. Um, (laughs) Sorry. I was... Strawberry Queen last year. Strawberry Queen last year. So did you win out the Strawberry Rose contest? Yes, I did. Oh, isn't that sensational? That's too... Well, no, no surprise that you got 26. It's no best 30 seconds, but look, it's something. <laughs> There's a strawberry drawn there. That is brilliant. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Joy, I don't know what to say to you, but you're great. Keep up what you're doing there. And um, I hope... Uh, I hope that everything is works out with the masters and that you keep bringing joy to your clients in Tala. Uh, you can find it yourself on the Instagram, yes? Uh, yes. Uh, let me just do a cheeky plug. Yeah, uh, please joy, do. Joy fitness underscore PT. Give me a follow. Um, and don't be afraid to give me a message if you ever need any support or guidance oh, or whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm an open book. That's the spirit. I like it. Mm. A burst of positivity from Joy quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Thanks, Joy. Stay safe. Take good care. Luck, good luck. Bye bye. <laughs>